Hey guys, it's Marty and welcome to Two Line Slot Cars. This week we're going to talk about timing on your analog track. Now you've got a couple options using timing software for analog. Some of you know that I started with digital. And when I started with digital, I went straight to Smart Race used an iPad, and I've been super happy with that. And when we went to the tech slot box, I was able to set up analog timing through Smart Race. It does a fantastic job. I love Smart Race. I'm a huge fan. It's a very modern interface. It looks great on the screen, very easy to use. It manages your cars really well. But as I started hosting race days with the guys, and we were doing a lot of no magnet analog racing, the one thing that Smart Race does not do is it does not do round robin racing. So some of the clubs out there, for some of you who are beginners and you've never raced out at a club, um, some clubs have so many people that they run heats. So they do qualifying. You run uh, a quick qualifying time, like one minute. Get as many laps as you can in on one minute, and they group those into heats based on your qualifying time. So if you've got 25 or 30 guys, you might do your qualifying and then at the end of qualifying, you have a C main, a B main, depending on how many, you know, how many uh, lanes you have. But if you're a two lane track analog, you can only run two at a time. So you do a, tr you do a race called a round robin. Basically, everyone gets to race each lane once. So the software needs to be able to track that and automatically move people in on one lane and out the other. And Smart Race doesn't do that. You have to manually move people to the lanes. You have to manually move and change the cars. It's very cumbersome um, to do a round-robin racing. It was really designed to do digital racing. Six cars on the track and have at it. And it does that great. I set up the analog timing, and we were trying to use Smart Race to do our analog. And we had figured out a way to to make it work. I was using Smart Race, would count the laps, and then I would basically use a spreadsheet. And depending on where you landed on the track, you got a 0 .01 through 100 point value because of segments on the track. And then you would add that up. So I may have run 15.87 laps for one race and 14.97 laps for the other. And then you would add that up and it would give you your total laps, basic math. And that was working really well, except for the fact that I kind of numbered the track wrong. So I've got to fix that. So I started doing some research and trying to find, I was looking at updating, upgrading to TrackMate and getting a, a lighting system to be able to do analog timing like every other track does out there. And then I watched the races at Electric Dreams for the USA Nationals and Marco there was using um, Lapmaster and I really liked that. And so I thought, you know what? There's got to be some other software out there. Let's see what's out there. Take a look at it. And maybe I can do some testing and decide. And I know a lot of you out there are not Mac users. I'm a Mac user. I, I love my Apple products. The iPad works great. It's a great interface for this. It's a touch screen. Makes it very easy. A lot of you are Windows guys. And maybe you have an old Windows laptop or a PC laying around. And you want to use that for timing. And if you don't have the TrackMate system or some USB interface that ties into your track, then the software can't control the power on the track. So what happens is there's a relay that's built into a USB device, and with some wiring, you wire that into the track. When you do a track call, it'll stop the time in the software, and then the software will, using a relay, will control the power to the track. Very convenient, works great. Well, I don't have all that. And I really don't know which direction I want to go. Um, I'm looking at my budget and how much I can spend on it and you know all those things. So I'm trying to do it under you, know, you guys know me. I try to do things under a budget. Um, I try to keep the cost low as possible and share that with you guys. And so I started looking around and discovering that there are a handful of software programs out there for race management. And one I found was called Race Coordinator. And Race Coordinator, um, the interface looks really easy to use. I started reading about it, and it's now freeware. And so I downloaded the app. I have an old Windows laptop that's running Windows 8. I download the app and load it up, and you can run it in demo mode, which means that it's not connected to a track, and it simulates a race so you can see lap counting and things like that. And I really like the interface. I thought that the practice screen was great because it was easy to clear when somebody new jumped on a lane. I thought that the race screen was nice and big and easy to read. That's one thing that we do have a problem with with Smart Race is it's kind of small on the big screen, and so sometimes it's kind of hard to see. And I don't have the brightest TV. It's an old TV down here um, that I salvaged, and the backlight's going out of it slowly and you know it's not a real super bright picture so it makes a little 
difficult to read unless things are really bright. And that's one thing about this interface with Race Coordinator is the interface is really bright. So I started doing some testing. And it's the one other software out there that I've discovered that you can use a webcam to do your timing. So I set up a webcam, I launched the software, played with it for a while to get used to it, figure it out. And then I read the instructions on how to attach a webcam to race coordinator to make it work. Now that I have it figured out, it's pretty easy. But if you're not a computer guy, then it might not make perfect sense. So when we go through the interface, I'll explain a little bit about what's going on. But basically there is a, an application in that resides in the folder, the programs folder for race coordinator that's called webcam.exe. And then there are some commands that you can put after that. So to get a webcam to work, um, you basically need a third-party application. I think I'm using Zone Planner. Um, it's a Windows motion detection for webcam application. And it has to be an application that can manage a webcam, that you can create separate motion zones, and then that each of those zones, when they're targeted, when there's motion in them, they will run a command. So a lot of them will take snapshot of pictures, They'll do that, but you actually need an application that will run a command that will say, run this program um, with, with these calls so that it knows that that's lap one or lane one, and this is a lap count for lane two up to you know however many lanes you have. So you have to set up the third-party software. It gets a little tricky, but I think I can give you a screenshot and show you how to run those, those applications when it gets triggered. And it should clear it up and make it a little easier. Again, if you're watching this and you have questions, leave a comment down below so that we can, we can talk about it in public so that other people can read the comments and, and get help if they need it. I will tell you, it was really pretty easy to set up. It took me a little bit of time to figure out the webcam piece. But once that happened, it works really well. Shout out to... Um, the person who wrote Race Coordinator, you did a fine job with the application. I'm not a big Windows fan. You made it look um, as modern as you possibly could um, on, a, on Windows operating system. And um, it is a really solid program, and I, I really like it. And it manages a ro round robin race very well. So let's go look at the software. I'll do a real quick walkthrough so that you know how the software operates, how to set up a race, talk a little bit about setting up the webcam for lap timing. But if you already have TrackMate, you already have um, some type of you got dead strips or whatever on your track, um, you can set the software up to, to use any of those. I don't have any of that. I had a webcam. That's what I'm using. So let's hit the track and, and check it out. Okay, this is going to be an overview of Race Coordinator. And this is the main race day setup screen. And so um, you have, you can add cars to the library. Um, you can add drivers who are available to race. And then you can choose an event or a single race what type of race, and there are a few options in the list. Um, there are There's practice, there's round robin, and then there's a fuel round robin. You do have the ability in this app to create a zone that is a pit stop, so you can actually do fueling with analog racing, So, um, which is pretty interesting. Um, you can select a season, you can create a season, you can run it in demo mode. Um, which will basically simulate a race so that you don't have to be attached to a track. Um, so you add your drivers. Well, let's, let's go up here. Um, here's where you set up cars. Um, the driver setup um, is really easy. It's a guided setup or an expert setup. The guided, you put the driver's name in. I'll just add my dad, Donnie Ford. Go to next. And we'll do the default audio, yes. Um, you can choose pictures if you can upload them to the computer. Um, you can just choose an avatar. We'll just go with the avatar that's included. And now you save, and now you've set up another driver. So if I wanted to create a race, and so I would just drag and drop the drivers that I would like. Um, so we'll add Dusty. We'll add Daryl, we'll add John Mark, and my dad. So there's five racers. Um, now you can come in here and remove them all. Um, and you can add them all at once if you want to use everybody. But, you know, your list of drivers could continue to grow. And we're going to do a round robin. And we're going to start the race. Um, and so here's how I have it set up. So it automatically started the timer. It tells you who's in the first race. And then 
over here you can see who is on deck and uh, it tells you there's heat there's five heats and it will give you a leaderboard now there are other windows that you can add to this by going to windows um, you can see the top five in laps you can see the heat results you can see segment times if you were measuring segment times and you get announcements from the announcer race starts in 60 seconds so you can add those windows to this interface if you want but right now this is what i feel like um, how i want to use it i want to see who's in coming into blue and the color is um, white lane blue lane you come in on blue and you leave on white so you can see up on on deck it says ronnie ford is in on the blue lane and next race okay race starts in 30 seconds so if i hit the space bar it will finish that countdown and we're now we're ready for the race to start but it will automate the whole thing so it will just keep uh, continuing and you can adjust that when you um, when you create the race type so you can pick um, all the elements of the race but yeah that's what the race uh, page looks like to exit out of that you just go to close that will board the race for now um, so we can go back to the track setup so expert track setup um, <clears throat> I thought this was a great idea. Um, you can name your track, you can upload an image, um, and then here's the track interfaces that they have worked out that you can use. Um, and I'm using the webcam because I'm, I am a plastic track, I'm a digital track, and I'm using the webcam, and um, that's a little tricky. Um, but then you can also put the number of track sections and what scale the track is. Um, so I have 100 sections of track. Actually, I think I have 102, um, but I've grouped some of the, uh, the quarter and one-third uh, pieces together just for numbering so that um, you can adjust at the end of a race based on where the cars stop. And instead of start the race from that spot, you can grab the cars, start from the start-finish line, or you can continue... Um, counting the laps without making lap adjustments. So you have that option if you want. Um, so you can run the round robin either way, and then you can update that track. So, um, and then you can set up the lanes, the number of lanes, um, the length of the lane, lane color, you can add lanes. So that's your track setup. Really, really pretty easy. So we'll close out of that. Um, you can set up the events, you can set up a season. Um, there are some options for stats, reset windows, uh, show tips, preferences. Um, it, it, it's a full-fledged race management tool. Um, it, it, it does a really nice job. So let's go ahead and start a race. And, oh, wait, I do want to show one thing. Um, let's go to practice. The practice screen is, um, is pretty unique. Uh, again, you get the protocol error, but I'll explain what that is. It starts the race, we've got two lanes. Um, it will just let you jump in and start racing and will give you lap times, your best lap time, and then your, then your last six laps in the interface and the total laps. And if somebody jumps in, you can clear that really easy by just clicking the clear button so that they get their own stats. And I think that's, that's great for practice because um, maybe you want to look at a jump at a different car or you know a different person jumps in the lane to practice so i think that's a great very easy um pre-race practice session screen i like it so so we've got all the drivers in here we are going to do a round robin and we're going to start the race the protocol error okay so what's happening is to use a webcam as the timer, like I'm using with Smart Race, Smart Race uses the Connect app and uses a separate device. This will actually use a webcam. But what you have to set up in the webcam is the hotspot zones. So you can see here's my footage. I'm using a program called Webcam Zone Trigger. Um, so Zone Trigger is a, a nice little app to use. You set up each hotspot. Here's the hotspot for the blue lane. Here's the hotspot for the white lane. And so when uh, the cars go through that 
highlighted area. Um, here's the trick. You have to tell it to do an action. And how this works with this program is you have to run a file command and in the race coordinator program files folder, there is a webcam.exe and there are, in the instructions, there are commands. So you have to refer to the file that you want it to run every time a car goes through that hotspot and then you make the parameter um, lap one, which would be for lane one. And then if I looked at hotspot two for lane two, um, it would say lap two. And that basically is how it uses the webcam. So now this race has started. Um, so let's go run some laps so you can see what happens. Race starts in 10 seconds. Okay, now the auto timer is running and we'll start the race in five seconds and i'm only running in one lane just to show some laps five four three two one go And then we'll automatically put a 30 second timer for you to clear your cars off. And then it will go to a minute and a half timer and set you up for the next race. So Dusty moves out. Ronnie came in to the blue lane and Daryl moved to the white lane for the next race. So very easy to manage a round robin race and that was the whole reason why I started exploring other applications so that we could race just like we do at our club. So very easy to set up, very easy to manage a race, um, automates everything on a Windows platform. This is running Windows 8 so it's a pretty old laptop and it's running the program just fine. So I think that you can use an old PC, throw this on it. Um, I'm using a little distribution amplifier to send the signal up to the TV. So you can see up on the TV, it's just mirroring what's going on on the laptop. And uh, yeah, that's Race Coordinator. So guys, that's a quick review of Race Coordinator for Windows to do analog timing using a webcam. Uh, so hopefully, if you have any questions, um, leave a comment, send me a message. Uh, my email is out there in the description of my channel, and I will try to help you uh, troubleshoot anything. Now, you can contact Race Coordinator for any issues with the software that you have. Um, but he does say on his website that he doesn't really support the third-party application, that the instructions are out there. And if it gives you error messages, hopefully the error message gives you enough information, you can figure out what's going on. And I was able to do that. So I'm hoping that what I provide will make that even cleaner and easier for you so that you know how to set it up with a webcam. It works really well. I have it set up on my back stretch. Um, I've got it tied to my TV so I can see it big um, during a race and glance up and look at my lap count. And it, will, and it, it announces when I run a fast lap. It announces who's leading the race. A lot of countdowns. It announces a lot of things that are pertinent for a race. It does a really great job. I totally recommend it. Now... I'm not bailing on Smart Race. I think Smart Race is fantastic. So don't get me wrong. If Mark writes in round robin scoring in Smart Race, I will probably bail on Race Coordinator because I like Smart Race that much. Honestly, Race Coordinator can do a great job. 
I just don't like having an extra laptop and I don't have it tied to the track. So race coordinator does not control the power, but I do have a track call button now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend that track call button over here by the computer. And so whoever's directing the race, when it counts down three, two, one race is over, they can hit that call button and kill the power to the track. So it's not automatic, but it's as, it's as good as we can get for cheap, right? So you guys all know me. I try to save some money, and uh, that's what we're trying to do. So if you like this kind of content, hit the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up. Hit the bell so you get notified anytime I put out new content. I'm excited to share these things to, with you. From the beginning, my channel has always been about um, the beginner slot car home racer. And then I started branching out into racing other places. And I know that my channel has progressed a little bit. Um, but I'm still not going to alienate the beginners. This is a big, this is a, a video for beginners. And I'm hoping that um, we can all learn from it. And if you were trying to decide what, what piece of software to use to do analog timing, if you have an analog track and you have a webcam and you have a, a computer, um, you can download Race Coordinator and use a webcam and get great, accurate analog timing. It just won't control the power to your track. You can live without that. It gives you really accurate lap times, and that's really what we're after. So um, there are other conveniences you can advance. And so maybe you start here with a webcam, and then you end up with a, you know, a TrackMate light system. So you can do lap counting, or you install dead strips in your wood track, or you use some other way to do timing. It looks like Race Coordinator will grow with you. Um, or you can try TrackMate software, or you can download LapMaster, which I think looks fantastic. I love how it operates for a round robin. I'd like to get my hands on it and do some testing with it, but it will only work with its own hardware. You give and take, right? So again, thanks for checking out the video. Hope you enjoyed it, and go have some fun racing.